Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I wanted to talk about the massive snowstorms that rolled through Buffalo, New York area, and how you could have seen this in advance on the 500 millibar charts. So we're going to run through today on how to read some of these 500 millibar charts so you can have a little bit better preparedness when these storms continue month after month through this winter to come at you so you can see exactly where the most severe weather will be inside these weather patterns using this specific type of chart. Now there are two different types of designations, but it's showing the same thing. One is hectopascals and the other is millibars. Equivalent, but they're just HPA or MB. So when you see those, those are the same thing. How do you read one of these charts? It has to do with the vorticity on how the wind is spinning, as well as the altitude, the literal altitude of the air masses itself. Obviously, cold sinks and warm air rises. If we take a look here, this is a semicoloration. You can see where the highest pressure is on this chart here. 5,700, that's the highest. Where would the lowest be? Here's the full color chart. When we come down and find something around uh, 5,400, where's the low pressure going to be? You can work the math out yourself. High and low, high pressure, is more stable weather low pressure is where we get into these types of snow events and these types of low pressure readings that you'll see at least for our winter in the northern hemisphere are where you will find the intense cold and snowstorm centers hurricanes and typhoons are the same thing but those are dipping way down into the low 900s when you get that type of eye in the hurricane or eye of the typhoon or cyclone if you will. Notice how the decreased pressure in the dark green matches up pretty well with where you see the coldest temperatures. Again you don't have to only look at the 500 millibar forecast chart you can actually go off and find you know numerical readings that match up with it so as you do this a little bit more and more it'll be easier for you. It's all about being prepared because as these storms roll through, temperatures are going to drop, there'll be heavier snowfalls. You should have some emergency kits ready in case your power cuts out. And we all should be prepared. If you live in Florida, you should have an emergency kit ready. If you live in an earthquake zone, you always have something ready. Extra candles, maybe a couple canned foods, some blankets, these sort of things. If your power goes out and it's 40 degrees below zero Fahrenheit, for a week, what will you do? And expecting that these types of cooler events will continue through the winter based on sunspot count diminishing into the beginning of what appears to be a next solar minimum, it would behoove yourself to try to prepare a little bit in advance. And this is where the weather forecasting comes in. This is a black and white. Where do you think the low pressure is? Let's look at the numerical values on here. The high is at 592 on the bottom left and you can see the low pressure at 508 up in the north that's in Canada as you can see the Great Lakes around the 510 circle there so it's really easy to take a look in here and see what's going on where the lowest pressure lowest temperatures and storms would be for snow and what they call the Vort Max where you start to see that real tight line contour is where the most severe weather will be so let's do a couple real world examples this was November 1st. What do you think happened down there? Look at the green in the center down at the bottom where you start to see the red tight lines come up into the green. That is the Vort Max there. What happened? Well, that was record-breaking temperatures in South Carolina, breaking all temperature and snow records back to the 1880s. If you look at the regular temperature charts, surface departures, you can see that that matches up pretty well with the way that the 500 millibar chart forecasts out. Again, there's different types of charts that you might see. 850 millibars, that's a little bit closer to the ground. That's more close to surface temperatures than it is. But still, it gives you a good reading. Notice where the circles close in on themselves. Those are definitely low-pressure areas that would contain cold snow and wind. This is uh, two days ago. November 18th, look what's coming toward England. Very easy to, to point out and see 
you know, where these types of storms are coming. If you were in England and you saw this, you're like, wow, okay, we have some severe weather coming, a lot of wind, could be some snow associated with that if the temperature is correct. The uh, 25th of November, where do you think the severe weather would be? Oh, right off of England again, pushing east toward the islands there. This is a push out toward Thanksgiving in the United States. If we're looking at the Vort Max, where do you see it? Oh, right around Alabama and Tennessee. Now, if that was me and I was living there, I would think to myself, hmm, that's coming. Maybe I should get some extra food, water, blankets, etc., in case our power goes out. Thanks for watching, and I hope the video helped you understand a little bit better how you can do your own forecasting and really see where these severe cold events will hit if they are near you somewhere, so you can prepare 